Hey there folks, so today, uh, today's video will be about the cross slide work that we've been doing here on the, uh, on the uh, 20 inch 10 double E. Um, I thought we would take a moment to get in front of this 30 inch just as a little bit of a reminder to show you the condition that the other two 10 double E's came in. So you can see they're pretty ratty, or they were pretty ratty in terms of just, you know, sitting in a non-functioning, non-operating factory for 25 years before I got them. Um, so, uh, you know, I, it's always good to come back and take a look at what I started with so that I, I kind of keep the, um, motivation going, right, for, uh, you know, plugging away at the one that I'm working on. So what we're going to work on today is the, um, the cross slide, uh, finish getting it, uh, cleaned up, assembled, and getting it mounted onto the, onto the lathe, and then maybe just a touch of digging into the, um, um, into the uh, taper attachment. The other thing I like to point out is uh, Chuck over at um, Outside Screwball, he did a little uh, video I just saw last night um, talking about all, you know, the, the levers and dials and knobs and whatnot that, that are on a 10 E, and he pointed out a bunch of stuff specifically on the uh, ELSR, uh, which I thought was, was really good and, and actually quite helpful. So, um, thanks Chuck, I appreciate you uh, shouting out um, over in, uh, on my channel and uh, if there's any questions or comments that people have, there, I got a lot of uh, comments on should I or should I not do the surface grind on the cross slide base and we're going to find out shortly what that decision was and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. All right, we're going to start assembling the cross slide. So, as you can see, uh, I made the decision to not surface grind it. Uh, I did some 320 on a, an aluminum block. Well, first I took a precision stone and just knocked down all the high spots and then just hit it with some 320 and then some um, maroon scotch bright. So, I think it's going to be okay. Look, if it if I get it on the machine and I, it just keeps bugging me, then I'll take it back off and, and surface grind it. But I don't think that it's going to, uh, I don't think it needs to get, go through all that trouble. So uh, let's start putting this thing together. So let's see, make sure you can see what's going on here. So right here, this area right in there, that, uh, has this little uh, plate that covers that and it stops the uh, the oil from the uh, what you know the oil that's up on top I guess from dripping down here and but it's cross drilled and it looks like this is probably a way for that oil to eventually come out um, so we'll we'll get that guy there's a gasket in there I'm not quite sure why there's a gasket there but there is and uh, let's get some screws in there. I think these are just plain old flatheads. There we go. Okay, so we have that guy there. So, what well, the next thing we could probably do is get the uh, this guy mounted up on the lathe with the gib and the gib adjusting screws. Ah, I forgot one thing. Let's go back to this. Maybe some of you guys might have recognized what I did in the incorrect order. And believe it or not. I've done this before on the other lead. Well, we'll get this straightened out. You'll see in a second what went wrong. So, 
this right here gives you access to getting the compound bolts in. So that's these guys right here. And on like the Chinese lathe that I have, which I have had a part for other problems, there's actually a, a, a larger hole in one spot where you could fit these things through. But on this lathe, you, you can't. On the first lathe that I did, these, uh, one of these screws was, uh, this was stripped. So you can see this, what's going on here. It has a, an arc machine into it uh, uh, with the same radius as this and this uh, side also. So they fit in this way. I was kind of pressed for time, so I, I got a hold of Monarch to, uh, to buy some replacement screws like this. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it was like $100, some crazy number. So uh, I wound up making them. And this uh, machine, th these are fine. So let's get these in here. And let's see, the orientation right like that. Okay. So now that they're in there, I can go ahead and put the plate on the bottom. All right, so back to this plate. I didn't replace this gasket right here. Um, uh, I don't think it's necessary. It actually may not look it, but it's must have been replaced at some point because it, although it doesn't look very flexible, it actually is still pretty flexible. So um, the gasket material I have here to make a new one is too thick. I checked it out. It would have raised this up higher. And then at that point, I think that there's a, uh, there's like a cover or something that slides in here. It, I just was concerned that it would, you know, hit it because this would have stuck up quite a bit. I only had thick, uh, thick material. And if, I don't know if you can see on camera here, but the ways really look good. I mean, you can see the top of the scraping marks. There's a little bit of a shine to them, but nothing really looks worn at all. So I think this is going to be pretty good. All right, so that's that's that guy. So now we'll get on to the next part. Okay, continuing on. So I'm just getting my parts set up for when I go to put this onto the uh, onto the carriage. So let's uh, get this lead screw set up. So what we have is some roller bearings um, they you know these flat thrust bearings I guess they actually are um, these were completely shot on my other lathe I had to replace them these look pretty good actually but what I'm looking for to see is you know is there on the flat part here is is there a little machined channel for the bearings to roll in or is it just flat and the marks that I see are from use. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, we'll check the other ones too. I think that they were flat to start with. So we're going to try it that way. We're going to we're going to go with the flat side and we will uh, if it doesn't feel right or I can't get it adjusted correctly I will change it, but I think that this is the way it should be. And the reason that I want to do it that way is it gives us, you know, a fresh surface. Uh, I don't believe that there's an orientation to this. It looks like it's a symmetrical, uh, symmetrical block. Okay. And we'll get the other guys on there. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. If you can't, I apologize. All right. Putting a little 
whey oil in there because this is going to get lubricated with whey oil anyway when it's um, uh, installed. So a little, little castle nut on there. We'll get this on. And I'm pretty sure that you just adjust this for a little bit of preload. And then a cotter pin goes in there. Okay. So we're pretty well lined up. So that's where I'm going to put the uh, cotter pin. I might give it a little snug. Kind of the seat the bearings. Let me go grab a wrench. Okay, so I gave it a little bit of a twist. And... Um, I can feel the bearings, so I'm going to back off just a skosh. And that feels really good. So let's get that cotter pin in there. I'm going to spin the cotter pin over there, there we go. And then just do this. Okay, so that's that. So I think the next step is we're going to go put this into the uh, carriage, get the parts all, all lined up, throw on the taper attachment bar, and then we should be able to put on the, uh, the cross slide base. So let's go do that. All right, we're back at the machine. So let's get this assembly put together. Uh, this is the cross side lead screw. We'll get this in here. Okay. We then have the this intermediate shaft, I guess you'd call it. So this engages the gear that's in the carriage, which is your drive gear for the cross slide power feed. You notice right here, there's a, uh, like a Woodruff key or a key. That key fits into this slot so it's an internal key so this shaft slides over that shaft like this and then you slide it all the way in and it engages the gear down there so if i engage the clutch for the cross feed uh drive i can't turn this now i can so now i know it's engaged in the gear so then the next thing uh to put on is going to be the, um, we'll get the lead screw nut on there. So I may have mixed up the order on this because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this lead screw on from this end. I don't think so. So I'm going to have to take the, uh, I'm going to have to take this back off and thread the lead screw from this side and I have to make sure I have it oriented right. So let me just pull this off and I'll bring you right back. All right, so I got this nut assembly and the bearings back off of there. So you see this side is threaded so the, the bolt holds onto this and then there's a locating pin that goes there. So you just have to make sure that this is in the right orientation. And I used the, um, the cross slide base as the reference so I could see which, you know, which side faces which. Um, and it looks like the threaded portion is this way. The nut's back here, so this is the way I believe it's going to go. Keep checking just to make sure. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm trying not to do is edit out the, uh, the mistakes um, or missteps, if you will, because, you know, that's how we figure out how to do this stuff. You know, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. So you see this is a left-handed, and we'll just get that on there. So I just want to get it past it, and then we'll go put the, uh, the stack of bearings in that block here. So remember, there's a bearing there, the block, and then there's a bearing there, and then we'll put the nut on it. All right, I'm back. One of the things, I don't know if you saw it, I, I, I don't know if it showed up on the video, but one of these pins dropped out. I had to go find that, and get this thing set up so let's get this thing in here grease makes it slippery or grease oil okay that's that 
There's also this guy that sits here, and this is for the um, taper attachment. There's a bar that sits on here. We'll show you that when we get to that part. So let's keep going with this. I'm going to go dig up a bunch of parts. Um, I'm going to go look at some old photos and make sure I know what I'm doing here. And we'll bring you right back. So I'm going to continue on putting this together. There's one thing that I, I'm not sure about. If I'm going to be able to actually fit the taper attachment on with this, you know, hooked up. And the reason why I'm a little bit worried about this, I was just looking at some of my older, uh, some of the photos when I disassembled this thing, and I noticed that the taper attachment base housing and everything was on here uh, after I had taken the uh, cross slide block out. So what I don't know is, will I be able to fit all that assembly up underneath here and attach everything? I, I don't really know. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I would put the taper attachment on now. I'm just still waiting for those uh, way wipers for um, from Monarch. And two of those are fairly involved. They have to uh, drill out some uh, pressed in pins to pull this little dust shield off so that I could get those and I'll show you when when they come in I'll show you how I do that um, I'll show you how we do that that together because I've never done it before so <laughs> we'll see we'll see how that goes so I'm gonna throw the few bolts in here get this thing kind of uh, set up and, and you know kind of hope for the best so let's get some uh, bolts in here You see there's a little uh, oiler right there, and that's to get some oil on those uh, thrust bearings that are in there, and there's a bronze bushing inside that block, if you notice that block I put in there before. So let's get this tightened up. And again, for the record, I'm not 100% sure that this is the right sequence and that we're not going to have to come back again and, and uh, make some disassembly happen in order to get some of these parts connected up. I'm kind of thinking that I should be able to just lift it up from underneath. There's, you know, there's a pin, everything that goes up in here. It's pretty tight uh, tolerances on all that stuff, so it might not be as straightforward as it seems. Um, the amount of effort, you know, or time it's going to take to actually get all these um, parts, you know, on and then back off again. Not that significant, so, I'll, uh, you know, I'm not too worried about having to do it twice. All right. Okay. There's this guy right here. I actually did run that through the surface grinder because it was really banged up. I did it on both sides. It's not a precision machine part, but I just wanted to clean it up a little bit. I didn't want to go too deep to take all of it out. Um, the machine, when I took it apart, was this way with these chamfers here. But I looked in the drawing, and it looks like it's supposed to be this way. So I'm going to go check the drawing again because two of the machines, they were the part was, this part was like this. And the drawing from Monarch says it goes like that. So we'll see. Um, and you can see there's a machined out notch and it travels along here with this uh, little pin to stop it from coming out once it's assembled. So I'm gonna go check the drawing again and see if we can determine once and for all, should it be this way or the other way? All right, so I checked the drawing, and I checked the 30-inch uh, Monarch, and this is the way it's installed. So uh, I'm going to go with it this way. Let's get some little whey oil on here, and we'll get this cross light on. Sorry if I'm in the way. OK. 
pay. All right, we'll go dig up the uh, the gib and we'll get that in there. All right, so have the gib. Um, it's stamped with uh, 359, which is the last three digits of this lathe serial number. So they match these bits to the individual machine. So the good news is this has the original gib. So let's get that in there. And okay. Um, I won't do the final adjustment on the uh, on the gib until I got everything bolted down here, and I'm confident that we're uh, you know we've we've gotten all the weight on it, everything the way it needs to be. And then I'll put an indicator, and I'll shake the thing back and forth, and we'll figure out we'll figure out what we have. So, guys, you have to tell me what you think about the non uh, machined surface ground finish. I think it looks okay. All right, let me go get the screws that mount up here, and then we'll continue on. I'll get the screws for the uh, Gibbs as well. All right, and this is the screw that holds that little sort of retainer for the taper attachment. So we'll get that in there. And then we have a cap screw that goes in here, that's for the nut, and this locating pin that goes in right here. Okay. Um, you know, the, the uh, jury's still out on whether or not I think we're going to need to replace this nut, uh, but we'll see. You know, I'm talking about the, uh, the, the uh, lead screw nut. So let's see here. I gotta go get a wrench to tighten that guy up. Okay. So, all right, so I gotta take a little bit of a break right now and go deal with some stuff and then we'll come back here in a few minutes. All right, so back on this thing again. So we got these guys in. We got this cover plate on here. Now, um, I had this in, but I had to take it back out again. So get the gib back in there. And we'll get the gib adjusting screws in. So you have a big one on the front side. And then we get one in the back. So like I said before, we'll come back and you know adjust this. All right, so. This guy is going to go right here, which is the retainer for the way wiper. So let me grab the new way wiper. Okay. So you see here, it's uh, this is direct from Monarch, a couple bucks. Um, just easier to buy it than than to make it. Sometimes you have to put a value on your time. So this goes right in here. Like that. Okay. So I think we need to get this on uh, the, the, the hand wheel on the front. And so I'm going to go grab a, uh, a an O-ring for that spot right there, which is the uh, oil passage for the bearings that go in the hand wheel. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I found an O-ring in my kit, new O-ring. Uh, I'll put that in there. It, it did originally have a cork gasket. I did not order that from Monarch. Um, I think an O-ring is fine. So I got that. What I'm going to do next is on the housing for the the hand, uh, hand wheel. So you have this screw right here. So those of you familiar with the way Monarch has set this up. So this thing goes in this way. And then you have this screw right here. And what it does is, uh, this is part of a feature that they have for, for threading. So if you have this out and the little plunger, if you can see it in there, that basically gives you, I think it's two rotations of the hand wheel. So as you're threading, you could just whip the thing right out and it stops. And when you then bring your uh, carriage back to start the next uh, round of threads, you whip it back in, of course, when this guy is, is in, and there's a, um, a dog mechanism in here that stops on that. So it's very repeatable. So you're going back and forth between, you know, your zero position and, you know, maybe uh, 100 thousandths out. And um, it just makes it very fast because you don't have to slowly come up on your your zero and then take your compound and add another, say, five thousandths to cut your thread for the next pass. You could it just very fast. And I'll show you later when uh, when we get this thing together, you'll see what I'm talking about. For those of you who have 10 double E's or lays that have this feature on it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's pretty handy to have. So let's go and... Uh, we got to knock this pin in because that's what stops this from uh, unscrewing all the way and falling out. So that uh, pin needs to be knocked in. So we'll take care of that. Okay, so I tapped this, um, that hole pin or the dowel pin in there, which now captures this uh, screw. I also took my precision stone and gave this a, a real quick uh, treatment on the face of it. This is where the, uh, the uh, dial that you, um, you know, set to zero. So I want that to be able to turn smoothly. So, uh, you know, there's a little deformity there from the, that pin going in. A couple other little shiny spots. So just took a little bit to clean that up. Um, get this uh, O-ring in there. And then we have a couple um, quarter 20 bolts that hold this thing in. Um, stainless bolts in here. I also noticed on the first lathe I did, this lathe when I took it apart, and the 30 inch that's over there, no washers, no lock washers on these on these bolts, which is interesting because on all these machines, these bolts are loose. Okay, so this right here, which moves around, I'm sure this is probably um, because of the um, taper attachment. Okay, so when you tighten down the um, Taper attachment nut, it doesn't slide back and forth. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right. This right here is the thrust washer. And you will get a little bit of oil on that. Now, I can't remember on the other machine if I had to. Um, take this apart to um, get this assembly put together or if I was able to do it uh, in place. There's a like three separate little rings, there's another ring and a disc and uh, it's surprisingly complicated for a dial that really all it needs to do is be able to loosen so you can spin the uh, indicator, the number indicator Lock it in with this guy. You'll see in a minute. It's, there's a lot going on in that part. 
So this video is getting a little bit long, uh, so I'm going to stop it right here and we'll continue on the next video where we're putting together the hand wheel, the, uh, the dial and indicators and a locking mechanism for the, uh, the threading feature on the, on the hand wheel. So thanks for watching and look out for that next video. It's coming up here shortly.